Alright, welcome everybody to the 2012 Top Gun Invitational. Kyle Sukovich with me is Michael Kramwat. We have some of the greatest players in the game here facing off. For your viewing pleasure, Kram, are you excited about this event? Oh yeah, uh, these players have been doing pretty well at Worlds. Um, we have, uh, what, two top eights from this, in this event? Yeah, yeah pretty just strong. from this year. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And all of these players are world-class players, world champions. Um, world finishers, national champions, so this is going to be a pretty good tournament. Yeah, and I guess our first round setting up, so we'll just cut over to the match and we'll get right into it. So our first one, we will have David Cohen, our previous world champion, versus Tom Dozel, who is just Tom Dozel. <laughs> oh yeah, uh, Tom's, you know, one of those really consistent players. He hasn't really won any major event, no, no nationals wins, no uh, worlds wins, but you know he's, he's he's one of those guys who always finishes super deep, um, and it's just it's just a really awesome just to watch him play. He's so good. Yeah, the thing about Tom is he really doesn't use any tricks when he's playing. He just kind of plays a straightforward deck as much as possible, and then he just tries to find creative ways to use his limited options to try to outplay his opponent. And he just focuses more on setting up than anything else. Yeah, like, this is really an example of his uh, straight dark ride deck that did, what was it, top eight at U.S. Nationals? Yeah. And um, it was just four of everything, except for a few cards that weren't, didn't really need to be four. Yeah. Um, and Tom, you know, he didn't do too well at Worlds. Neither did David. But, you know, they're still great players. It's just one tournament. You can't judge someone based on one tournament. So, I mean, Tom's deck, you can see how much it impacted this year's Worlds. So many people, even you, Pram, were using his deck at Worlds, and you can see just his idea of just running the straight dark ride deck impacted the entire game. Yeah, I was using Tom Dozel's card for card list. Uh, it, was, it served me pretty well, got a top eight out of it, so. Um, but yeah, this is, this is gonna be a good match. I don't know what David's playing though. I'm pretty sure Tom stuck with Dark Rye. Oh yeah, I don't. I don't think he owns any other cards. <laughs> but we'll see how this works out. So um, we have David going first. Yeah. Now we focus on Tom a lot. I don't think we focused enough on David, who is our last year's world champion. Mm -hmm. We really haven't seen a whole lot from him. But I mean, this would be a good opportunity for him to showcase his skills. He really hasn't gone to any tournaments since his world win, and we'll see what kind of deck he comes out with here. We don't really know. Magnabor doesn't exactly work anymore. And we are getting all set up. We have our two wonderful judges, Doug Morisoli and Ben Sock, mm -hmm. and we are going to get ready to go here soon. We have a ton of great matchups. Tom Dozo versus David Cohen. Sammy Sakum versus Sugiyoshi Yamato. And then we have Yuta Komatsuda versus Esa Huntunen, John Roberts II versus Jason Kaczynski. All these matches are being recorded, but this is the one you get to watch right now. Yeah, you know, top, I wonder how, I wonder what David's playing, do you know? Like, no, I, have, I mean, we don't collect deck lists for this, obviously, we, we trust the players. I was just wondering if someone mentioned it, but um, it looks like we're going to get started soon. And uh, here, well, all right. So there's the begin sign. Well, it just got announced. Yep. So we are all ready to begin. Here we, here go. we go. Round one of the Top Cut Invitational, and looks like David is playing a Dark Rime U2 deck. Oh, this is a pretty rough matchup for Tom. Uh, I know uh, this deck actually just got second place and first place in the Masters Division. Oh, I don't know if this runs Thrakia, though, or not, but... Yeah. Yeah. It looks like David has a really bad start. He only has that Mewtwo double call list, no supporters. This might be where Tom's consistency will shine through. Maybe his deck will still set up. It's interesting that Tom starts with double Dark Rye, but, uh, you know, we'll see. We, so we see an Eviolite, um, and, you know, Tom's the type of player who, when his opponent doesn't play a supporter, he's just going to make it so... Well, I'm just going to make sure you can't uh, portrait me. Yeah, I mean, he's a very smart player, obviously. He's done extremely well at all these tournaments. And I think he's got to be licking his chops here, seeing that David doesn't have a supporter. And right off the bat, he hits a lost remover. That's going to set David back big time. 
Oh yeah, I do see a potion in Tom's hand. <laughs> he's <laughs> he's gonna just gonna probably play it down once Dark Knight gets a little bit more damage to fully use that three damage counter removal. Yeah, and I mean, what what can David do? His hand is horrendous, as you can see. Just a bunch of dark energy, a catcher, maybe a junk arm. He really has no options. He's in complete top deck mode, and this. I'm, I'm sad this is our first match, but hopefully it turns into something better. Tom's start hasn't been fantastic either. It's really just been Eviolite, Eviolite, Energy, Lost Mover Pass. True. Um, so it, it's, I think this turn's going to really set the tempo for the game. Mm -hmm. it, it, whether Tom can go for a... Oh, and Tom oh, just passed two. <laughs> yeah, never mind. Well, I was about to say whether Tom can get a turn two Night Spear or not, but that turned out to be not be the case. Yeah. So now, he, I mean... This is the, the slowest paced game I've ever seen between these two decks. You have Speed Darkrai, which has not attacked at all yet, versus Darkrai Mewtwo, which has just been using X-Ball. And there's a potion from Tom. I believe that's one from an earlier set. And it's going <laughs> to catch her out, this Darkrai here. Looks like he's just going to pass. Yeah, Tom really drew dead after that Juniper. Um... So it's really just going to be who top six out of this first. I think David has a huge advantage in this position, uh, simply because he has energy, so he can attack. Yeah, and the more time he gets to build energy into play, to eventually use X-Ball with Mewtwo, the better for him. I mean, the, the reason why the Darkrai Mewtwo matchup is so tough for the straight Darkrai deck is just, eventually, you could build up that giant Mewtwo with a ton of energy, and then just X-Ball, and... Their deck doesn't play Mewtwo, so they can't knock it out in one hit. Yeah, so let's see. We do see another X-Ball coming out from David. And let's, I wonder what Tom's going to do here. He may have a... Does he have a junk arm or anything like that? Uh, he's oh, he just has another potion. <laughs> <laughs> that has to be so, a little tilting. Tom's not gaining any ground, but he's at least making sure David isn't either. <laughs> So, still, I think one energy for Tom. Uh, yeah. This is a pretty <laughs> exciting game, huh? Oh, yeah. One energy at a time. We're back in, like, base set days where, I mean, it's like Haymaker versus Haymaker. We're, we're just jabbing one step, one step at a time, and nobody's really getting anywhere. <laughs> well, back then you had an energy removal, so maybe yeah. it's just, like, less. Maybe uh, all the boards would look like Tom's board. We had a loss remover, okay. That's true. <laughs> so, looks like David drew a dark rye. Oh, he oh. drew a juniper. Big moment in the game. David is the first one to top deck out of this rut, and maybe he'll be the first one to start making some big plays. Yeah, a, a Night Spear here would almost, I won't, if Tom can't do anything after that, it would almost be game ending. Right. But he's going for the X-Ball instead, and he's going to do a, a respectable amount of damage here. Well, it looks like he'll do 60. It is 5 energy, minus 40 for the resistance and the Eevee Light. Mm -hmm. So it's not going to do a ton. It won't even be a two-hit knockout, even if he gets another double Colas on there. But it's going to put the fear of Mewtwo into Tom. Yeah, but he could. Uh, there, there's also the Shaman possibility, too. Right. Uh, if he goes maybe... We'll see there's a Dark Patch there, so maybe now he doesn't need uh, that many energies to go and knock out Dark Riot. Don't but worry, but Tom's at least got a loss remover. <laughs> oh, so he plays two in there. Yeah, hmm. barely. So this must, must uh, may be more similar to what Jason Klasinski and Sammy Sikum ran in their world's list. Perhaps. Looks like Tom realized how good loss remover was when he was playing and decided to add maybe a couple more. Interesting. So... Now, you've lost your X-Ball route. I mean, you can still do it. Yeah. But it won't be as nearly as effective as it was with those DC. Yeah. What would you do here? I, don't, I think the funny thing is, even though Tom hasn't been able to do anything, the fact that his Darkrai doesn't have any energy on it means David can't even damage him very much. I mean, a Mewtwo with two energy using X-Ball against an EV lighted Darkrai, it's already minus 40. So it, he's hitting for like 20 damage. So Tom, even though his heart, his start is horrendous, it doesn't actually matter because David really isn't doing anything back to him until he Night Spears. I like Tom's energy attachment here. He's putting it on the bench Dark Rye. You know, that's really just saying, okay, I'm just going to sit here and, you know, absorb some damage. I can't really Night Spear you. Yeah. Maybe in a couple of turns that'll change, but I need to just keep myself from being killed. Yeah. And uh, 
I mean, that's all you can do in this situation. Just try to buy as much time as possible. Maybe in the future you can top deck a supporter. You'll be able to play a couple potions to heal the damage off and get yourself back in this. Or maybe, well, I highly doubt David would use N here. Uh, you know, so he ha does have a switch in his hand. We, just, we saw that. He was considering it. Yeah. And has he attached this turn yet? I don't believe so. Nope, he played the switch. So he hasn't attached yet. I think he would go for Night Spear here. I think so, too. I mean, I don't know what else you would do. <laughs> There's the switch. Maybe poke at it for another 20 with uh, X-Ball? <laughs> yeah, I guess if you're really dedicated to X-Ball, you could really do that if you wanted to. 20 at a time. Maybe maybe Tom will never never draw support in this game. Well, that's what you do to win Worlds. <laughs> X-Ball. Yeah, that's what we learned this weekend at Worlds. Mewtwo is pretty good. <laughs> It was featured in, uh, I think, almost every deck. Yeah, every yeah. top four deck, for sure. And, I mean, it was... The last game of the World Championship was literally decided by three Mewtwo's being knocked out by Igor Costa from Portugal, which is kind of strange to think about. He took all six prizes from Mewtwo's. Yeah, you know, that is really strange, <laughs> but it's kind of ironic just how the, as how the format's played out all year. Yeah, I agree. And Tom, still, he is laughing about how horrible his hand is. <laughs> uh, I feel bad for him because he really has had a rough weekend here at Worlds. Didn't do very well. But uh, sometimes that's just how it goes. You just don't draw the cards when you need them. Yeah, you know, this isn't the end for Tom, though. Even no. if, he, if, this, if he loses this game, all you have to do for this tournament structure is to win two games out of three. Right. So, so. You, you can afford to lose once. Mm -hmm. The only key, you have to win two out of your three games to advance, and then we'll have a top four. These rounds are 30 minutes, plus three turns, just like a normal tournament, Swiss rounds. And then the top four will actually be 90 minutes, so we're going to make Jason Kulinski very happy today. That, or maybe a little upset that we didn't give him unlimited time, like last time. <laughs> yeah, well, at least he gets two out of three this year, not just a single game. <laughs> so, we do see another Night Spear, and... Hey, yeah. Tom drew a dark energy. I think that's the uh, nail in the coffin here. This this game can go on the blooper reel, I think. This, this is pretty sad to watch. There's a ton of damage on his active. I think it's like 140? Am I seeing that uh, right? Yes, uh, yes. No, no, 160. 160? 160. 160? I think so. I can't tell. Oh, no, Either way, he's going to be knocked out by this nice Yeah. So, he really does not have much of a chance to come back here. I don't believe Tom plays N. No. Maybe one at the most. So comebacks are far and few between for this deck. You really depend on getting your early Night Spear. If you are slower than your other than your opponent, I mean, usually their deck is built to go a little slower, but when they set up, they're stronger than you. Darkrai is good early on, but as the game progresses, it's not as strong. Yeah, you know, the only real way for comebacks is with Portrait. Yeah. Now, Tom still has that available to him. However, I think if David has a Shaman, the game is over. Yeah, um, that's going to be all she wrote for poor Tom. I feel bad for him. He really is a great player, just nothing is going right for well, him. And there's the Shaman in his hand. Yeah, yeah this one that's, is over. That's all, that's it. I'm, I'm sure David will see this. So how much energy is that? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, uh, 6, 7, More than 10? enough. <laughs> so that's 200, 160, 160, yeah. yeah. And that is going to be it. David Cohen will win round one here at the Top Gun Invitational versus Tom Dozel in a fairly uneventful game. <laughs> well, you know, I'm sure a lot of games like this uh, happened at Worlds. You know, that's just kind of the, the, the beast of the format. You know, uh, Mewtwo is pretty strong. Yeah. And the only thing that really consistently beats Mewtwo is, well, other Mewtwo's. Yeah, poor Tom didn't go so well for him here in the first round, but like we said, he's got more chances to win here in the next two games. He does have to win his next two, though, so it'll be tough for him, but if anyone can do it, it's Tom Dozo. Yeah, so the other games are still in per, uh, progress. Um, we'll see who Tom plays after this. Do you remember what color he had for what flight, what uh, pot he was in? Uh, he was the yellow one, the flappy. Okay, so he will be playing the winner of, or I'm sorry, Tom will be playing the loser of Yamato Sammy. Yep. And David will be playing the winner of that match. Mm-hmm. Huh, I wonder, you can catch that uh, 
that match on our, the other stream that is going on. Yeah, twitch.tv uh, slash card leagues. You can find the other match being streamed live right now between Sami Sakum and Sugiyoshi Yamato. So if you want to check that game out, definitely go ahead. I got the guys from uh, Card Leagues here who were nice enough to film the other matches, and they're streaming it to their site. Yeah, and in the uh, white pod, we have Yuro Komatsura yep. and Asa... Uh... Yun Tunen, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, and we have John Roberts II and Jason Klesinski. Yeah, so a lot of dynamic matchups here. We're going to see some great games no matter what. And, you know, no matter what happens, none of these players can feel bad. I mean, these are eight of the game's best players. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, you can't be ashamed of losing to David Cohen, last year's world champion. He can't be ashamed of losing to, like, Jason Pazinski, Sammy Sakum, all these guys. Yeah, this is a really stacked tournament. Yeah. And um, so, I guess since, since we have some extra time, why don't we explain to the viewers how this tournament format uh, is broken down. Sure. Uh, well, before we do that, I just want to apologize. I know the video and audio for this thing is off, so just try to bear with us, but better looking at us than a uh, blank table, probably. So... Yeah, you want to go ahead and explain the tournament format? Sure. So the, the way we did it is we broke the eight players into two separate pods. And this is just simply to get more games out of them because, you know, we all like to watch games, so we'll make them play more. So the way it works is we split into two pods of four, and well, there's a yellow pod and a white pod. Mm -hmm. And basically the, the winner of each match, of each yellow pod match, We'll play each other in the second round, and the loser of each uh, of the first round match will play each other in the second round. So then, uh, if, if you go 2-0, if you if the winner of the winners match wins, he advances as seed one of let's say pod white. Yep. And then, if then the lo the winner of the losers match goes on to the play the loser of the winners match from pod white. And the winner of that match goes on to second seed of that pod. And the other two are eliminated. If you take so basically to simplify this, if you win twice, you move on to the semifinals. And if you lose uh, twice, then you are eliminated. Yeah, just to clarify, after round one you'll have two players that are one and oh, two players that are 0 and one. After the second round there'll be a person who's two and oh, he advances to the top four. You also have two people who are one and one, and they'll play the third round to decide who advances to the top four. And then the player who unfortunately goes 0-2 will be out of the tournament, and he'll get his prizes, and we'll say thanks for playing, and he'll get to enjoy the rest of his time here in Hawaii. So we do have, speaking of prizes, uh, we do have a nice amount of prizes for our uh, our players. Can thanks to all of you guys who've yeah. uh, donated. It's been really cool that you guys did this. Uh, you know, we really couldn't do this without you guys, so thanks. Yeah. We're doing it for you guys, and, well, for us, too. We, we would love to see these guys play all the time. And I just want to say thank you to everybody who donated prizes to this event. We have a ton of great stuff. We have a trophy. We have boxes. We're giving away playmats to everybody. Uh, we have different sorts of sleeves, packs, booster boxes, all sorts of great stuff. We even have some old-school, like, base set cards that yeah. uh, someone was generous enough to donate to us. So these guys are not going home empty-handed. Yeah, that, that uh, base of cards set was actually really cool. It was like the cards that defined the WT, uh, Wizard of the Coast era. Yeah, yeah, we have like Electabuzz, Hitmonchan, Wigglytuff, those kinds of things. So Slow if you King, guys, yeah. Slow King, yeah. So if you guys played back in those days, get a bit of nostalgia seeing this kind of stuff. Um, I believe there's like Pichu and Murkrow, Sneasel as well. <laughs> really cool cards, uh, really unique gift to give to these players, and um, just want to thank Adam Keebler for sending that in to us. That was really thoughtful. Yeah, that was really cool. Um, so also, check out when we put them up our vi Worlds videos that we'll be putting up shortly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we'll get that out as soon as possible, probably sometime after this event. Mm 